one of the problems I have in class sometimes is that um, students seem reluctant to practice and make a mess on a piece of paper. They don't want to waste their materials. And I get that because they're expensive and I don't like to waste mine either. So today I'm just talking about how you can practice on a piece of paper and then re re prepare it to reuse it for uh, a more finished painting. Hi, welcome to the studio. I'm Mindy Whitten. Today I just want to talk about how we can not waste our paper. So this is a piece of paper I was just demonstrating marks and so on in my class. As I walk around the students I take a piece of paper with me just if they ask a question I can quickly draw something on there. So they're all just a hodgepodge of colours and different marks and nothing to keep them together. But it's a good piece of paper I don't want to lose it. So what I'm going to do is just um, take a box of pastels and start just going over it randomly. So I'm going to take nice deep dark purples there. Uh, I'm going to put in some blue. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to paint at the moment. I'm just preparing a, sh a sheet of paper by correcting the underpainting. So now I'm putting in some walls over this area. I'll introduce a bit more of the wall there. Uh, I might even a little red uh, and some of this purple. I'm taking the purple all the way around the edges. There was some green that I didn't like, so that's going to smash that with the purple. So now I've just got this colourful kind of uh, hodgepodge of colours. Trying to keep some idea of, of um, colour theory going. I've got some warms against some cools uh, and some darks and then some lighter areas just to help it. And now what I'm going to do is just take, take a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol and a soft brush, dip it in and start moving that around. Just so I'm starting to cover the paper. And it's getting a nice, rich, dark background in there, ready for when I want to do a painting on this again. It's not going to clog up the The grit on there, I haven't put it so much pastel on that it's going to clog, clog up the, the paper. Now if you don't have isopropyl alcohol, all is not lost, you can just use plain water. So just tipping a bit of water in here. It doesn't move as around as easily but it still moves around. So you can see the difference between the isopropyl alcohol and the water. I'm just washing it in between because otherwise it can turn a bit muddy. So it's now a lively kind of, I can flick around, make more marks if I want to. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this so really making more marks this is probably not that helpful at this stage but I can do that. I've got some very nice patches there. I'll just bring that a little bit closer so you can see it. So there's the finished underpainting ready to go for your next painting and you can see that it's lively, it's interesting, it's got interesting marks, it's got interesting colours and it's a valuable piece of paper now. I've improved it from the original uh, just plain violet that came from the art shop and now it's uh, much more original, much more interesting and will help me go off into an interesting painting once I start using it. So don't be afraid to take one of your good pieces of paper, have experiments on it, different mark making techniques, different colour combinations and just use it uh, next to the painting that you're doing to try ideas out on and then when you're finished lay on some more colour, don't clog the tooth up too much, wash it down with 
water or alcohol and there you go brand new piece of paper nothing wasted and lots gained from that exercise of practice thanks for joining me in the studio today see you next time bye for now